Welcome back to Squawk this morning. Cannabis stocks outperforming the market this year. And as the industry expands, more women are playing a major role in its growth. For that, Frank Holland joins us now with more. Good morning to you, Frank. Hey, good morning to you, Andrew. The cannabis industry added 77,000 new jobs in 2020, and the majority were women, according to a new report. The percentage of women in cannabis had increased from 39% in 2019 to 42% last year. The report also finds that nearly half of all cannabis workers, they've been in the industry a year or less. That dynamic increases the chances for female advancement, according to Carson Humiston, the founder of Banks, a cannabis staffing business. To be able to come and, and join a company, get equity in the early days and work in a business for a couple of years and then technically be considered someone with a lot of experience in cannabis um, is, is, is great and a great opportunity for women. And women as cannabis customers also growing. New data from Ease, a cannabis delivery service in California, shows women have grown to nearly half of their overall customers in 2020. We talked that trend with Caroline Pinot, an adult use dispensary owner in Massachusetts. There's opportunity still to define what it means to have retail cannabis stores, cultivation, delivery, social consumption, and it's still being figured out. So um, by all means, I think women um, in many ways are the future of this industry. And with U.S. legal cannabis sales forecast to grow 40 percent in 2021, Bank says there's an increasing need for professionals like accountants and attorneys. And women can also find opportunities to transition into the industry that way. Frank. If we're going to talk cannabis, I got to talk about our, our home state of New York here. Right. Do you have a view of what's going on with uh, with uh, Governor Cuomo? Well, I mean, Andrew, clearly it's an exciting opportunity for, you know, a tax revenue to be added to the state. So many states, New York included, are trying to find new ways to generate tax revenue after the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, one estimate I've gotten from the parent company, that's the company that puts out Jay-Z's cannabis line, that Manhattan alone is a $1 billion cannabis market. So you can just extrapolate what could it mean for the entire state and how big this market could be? Um, New York, obviously the biggest city in America, um, has so much potential. And then you look at a state like Illinois, where they literally can't keep cannabis on the shelf. So you can only imagine the tax revenue potential uh, when it comes to legalizing cannabis here. Okay, one other New York question. Depending on the fate of the governor, does it matter? Meaning, meaning if, if, he, if he ultimately is not in the seat... If you look at his his lieutenant or the other, what happens in this state? Is there is there some more more support for it, less support for it if he's there or not? You know, I don't think that's 100 percent clear right now, Andrew. I think most state lawmakers are pretty consumed with the drama surrounding Governor Cuomo himself. I think the real question is, is New York going to fight the trend or are they going to go with it? If your neighboring state of New Jersey legalizes cannabis, um, clearly people can just cross the border and go over there and get it. And I think when it comes to cannabis or other issues, when you have a neighboring state where people go back and forth often, legalize something, you keep it illegal in your state, you're only adding pressure to law enforcement. You're only adding pressure to municipalities to regulate something that's legal just a few miles away. So it forces the issue in New Jersey. It forces the issue in Connecticut. It's so interesting. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.